In the city of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And if the blind lead the blind, they both will fall into a ditch. Now, these Israelite camps are in air. They have stumbled at the stumbling stone and have not done a thorough study of the scriptures. Now, Esau will bear the blame. Because we know for a fact that the nation of Edom, and that is the white race, is responsible for 99% of the false teaching we have here in Christianity. But Esau, Edom, is a metaphor. It is going into the father and son religion. It is going into Saul and Esau's religion. Now, Paul is the one who gave us that religion, and we call it Christianity. So Esau, Edom is not just going into a skin tone, my brothers. It is actually going into a religion. The religion of Edom is Christianity, okay? And it's going into a religion that was forced upon the prophet Isa. You see, from the foundations of the world, the prophet Isa was the Messiah of Islam. But what happened was Paul stole the prophet Isa from one religion and put him into another religion. Now, let's go through the parables that's in the scriptures on the two sons. These two sons represent the prophet Isa and Paul. Now, let's start in Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 48 and 17. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. But put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Now, this is going into two religions. Ephraim represents the nation of Christianity and Manasseh represents the religion of Islam. Now, Manasseh was the eldest, just like Jesus is the firstborn. But what happened to the prophet Isa? He had to fall under the curse of Canaan and he had to be a servant to his brothers, just like Esau had to serve Jacob. And this is seen right over in Genesis 25, 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived and the children struggled together within her. What is that going into? That's going into the fight of Islam and Christianity. This fight has always been even from the beginning. Where y'all been? Where y'all been at? And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in your womb and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger. This is why the nation of Islam will have supernatural assistance from the prophet Isa when he returns to a world ruled by Edom and he destroys the cross. So the prophet Isa had to serve under his brother. This is why he was a servant to his brother. It's all because of Ham. Who is Ham? I'm speaking of the false Abraham. The false Abraham seen his father's nakedness and his son Canaan was cursed as a result of it. Now that's the story of Jesus in a nutshell. All because of Paul proclaiming to be the father, the prophet Isa had to be a servant of servants to his brother. This story is told over and over and over in the Bible. Nathaniel need to wake up because he is misleading a multitude of our people. Now, let's go to the next parable. Let's go to Samuel, 2 Samuel 12 and 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. Now, the rich man represents Paul. The poor man represents the prophet Esau. Why? Because his inheritance was stolen. Verse 2, the rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, 
All these churches you see with Jesus' name on them, they don't belong to Jesus. They belong to Paul. Paul is the father of the Christian church. But the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb. Now that ewe lamb is going into Bathsheba. Why do I say Bathsheba? Because Bathsheba is going into a nation that believes in purification, voodoo, and evolution. Bathsheba represents the nation of Islam. That's why her name is called Bathsheba. Get it? <laughs> And Uriah only had one wife, and that's a picture of Christ. He was only the Messiah of one religion, Islam. So we see that the rich man is Christianity, and the poor man is Islam. Verse 3, but the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished up. And he grew it up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup. And lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. Now think about John, how he would lay in the prophet Esau's bosom. This poor man represents the prophet Esau. And I'm going to give you another reference. Let's keep going. Verse 4. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wafering man that was come unto him. Wafering means traveling. But took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. Now this is also a picture of a Christian nation, America, assisting Israel in killing the Palestinians. Verse 5, And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man and said unto Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. So the church that was stolen from the prophet Esau will be restored. There's coming a day when the prophet Esau, peace be upon him, will return to a world ruled by Edom, and the first thing he will destroy is Paul's church. Verse 6, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold. So that religion of Islam will prevail above all religions, just like it says in the Quran. The kingdom is going to go from the Pharisees. Okay, another word for the Pharisees is the Christians. The kingdom is going to lead the sons of Saul, the Christians, and it will go to the Muslims. Verse 7, and Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house. All these churches that have Jesus' name on them, they were stolen, okay? Paul stole them. God allowed Paul to have all of the churches that were supposed to be the prophet Esau. You see, now you understand how the inheritance of the prophet Esau was stolen. It was stolen by Paul. Paul snatched him from one religion and put him into another religion. And I gave thee thy master's house. Who is the master of the Christian church? Jesus. Who is the father of the Christian church? Paul. God allowed Paul to have all of the prophet Esau's churches. But there's coming a day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow Jesus to come back and he will destroy the cross and he will die and all the nations that was in Christianity will go into Islam. Verse 9. Wherefore has thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite. Who is responsible for killing the prophet Esau on biblical record? Paul. Paul is responsible. And I'm not letting up. Right here in the house of David, we are going to continue to expose the wolf in sheep clothing, whether you like it or not. Why hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and has taken his wife to be your wife. You took his church to be your church. Okay. You stole God's house. 
Okay, then you put the prophet Isa's name on him. Okay, Paul is guilty of forgery. This man is the enemy of God. Wake up, Israelite camps. Let's keep going. And has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, Ammon means teacher. Okay, Paul has destroyed the church with his own letters. That's what that's going into. Verse 10. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. So just like the church teaches that Jesus Christ died for them. Nope. It's the opposite. The church will die for Jesus. The church will die for the Muslims because God will give every Muslim a Christian and a Jew, and he will say, this is your ransom from the fire. Now, let's get another parable in the New Testament about the rich man who is Paul and the poor man who is the prophet Isa. Peace and blessings be upon him. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 16, because many of us skip over this. Now, this story starts in verse 19, and it goes all the way down to 31. I'm just going to go through a few highlighted scriptures. Now, let's go to verse 19. There was a certain rich man. This is a true story. That's why it says a certain rich man. This rich man was Paul, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. This is a picture of the largest religion we know of, Christianity. And there was a beggar, a certain beggar, rather, Named Lazarus. Now, Lazarus is a picture of Christ, the poor man, which was laid at his gate full of sores. You see, the prophet was almost in trouble. He was questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you ever say to the people, worship you and your mother as gods? You see, Jesus almost got put in that same pit, that same prison that's named Bulas, which is the Arabic name for Paul. But Allah had mercy on him and saved him from the pit. And we are so grateful for the nation of Ishmael. Because just like Joseph was rescued from the Ishmaelites, it was the same thing with the prophet Isa. Now, verse 21. In desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and see of Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So the real Abraham meets the false Abraham. And Jesus is in paradise. Remember, Abraham's bosom at the time was considered paradise. So we have one man burning in hell. And we have one man in paradise. That's a picture of Jesus in paradise. And that's a picture of Paul in hell. Now, the nation of Islam gave us this revelation that Paul is in hell. Now, let's keep going. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and see of Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So this rich man invented someone coming back from the dead. Okay, that religion of someone coming back from the dead all originated with King Saul in the Old Testament and all originated with the New Testament King Saul. It's just that simple. Verse 25. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus received evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this. So this is how you know. That can't nobody come back from the dead. This was all a false teaching. And Jesus let that be known right here. Even David brought that out. That you cannot come back from the dead. When his son died. He said I shall go to him. But he shall not come to me. And the prophet Isa is saying the same thing. He's saying besides all of this. Between us and you. There is a great gulf fixed. 
so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. So this is telling you, it's impossible for somebody to come back from the dead. This is how we know that when King Saul was talking to that witch, he was not talking to the prophet Samuel. He was talking to a familiar spirit. Verse 27, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five yeah. brothers that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. See, there's no repentance in that false religion called Christianity, where you say one man died for your sins for you to repent. No. If they don't believe in Moses, if they don't believe in the prophets, they're not going to believe in one, though he rose from the dead. Verse 31, and he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So this is another story of the real Abraham meeting the false Abraham and the false Abraham is Paul. This is why Jesus startled you. Okay, when he said before Abraham was I am, he was basically saying, I'm before that false prophet Paul. I am before that false God. Jesus was being sarcastic to the Pharisees. He was telling them, your father is not the real Abraham. Your father is the false Abraham. And I came before that guy. Now let's get one more parable. This is going to be in the book of Genesis. And we're going to go to Genesis chapter 40. Let's start at verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. Now remember, the prophet Esau almost got in trouble with God. Just like Joshua almost got in trouble with God because of Achan. Now let's keep going. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers, that's the prophet Esau, and against the chief of the bakers, that is Paul. And he put them in ward, that means prison, in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them. And they continued a season in word. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream, and one night each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in prison. One man was the butler, that is the prophet Esau, peace be upon him. He is the slave of Allah. You see, he was nothing more than a messenger. And the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, gave us that revelation. And the other chief of the baker, was Paul. He is guilty of the leaven of the Pharisees and that is the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now let's skip and let's go down to the meat of the matter. Let's go to verse 13. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup in his hand after the former manner when thou was his butler. So one man is going to be promoted. One man is going to be saved from the pit. And that is the prophet Esau. But let's see what happens to the chief baker. The one who was guilty of making cakes to the queen of heaven. The apostate Paul. Verse 16. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good. He said unto Joseph. I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head, and in the uppermost basket was there all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. Three baskets are three days, yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree. And the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and the chief baker among his servants. So the Christians are going to be demoted. The Christians are going to be the ransom for the Muslims in hellfire. And the butler, okay, the Muslims are going to be promoted. It's just that simple. There is nothing new under the sun. Now, my question to you is, how long are you going to sit there and play dumb? 
The truth is right before your eyes and you can't ignore it. This is the revelation of the two sons. One son was beloved and was going to burn. The other son was beloved and he's going to be free. And he was nothing more than a messenger, a servant of Allah. And he was made a servant to his brothers. This is the reason why Jesus was born supernaturally, but yet he had a father named Joseph. This was a picture of the prophet Isa's twin, Paul, okay? With all this being said, we realize today that Esau is a metaphor. My brothers in these Israelite camps, y'all need to wake up. Esau is deeper than just a skin tone. It is going into a religion. And yes, Esau is responsible for teaching that false teaching and he will bear his judgment. I agree with you on that. But where you're off is you're being exactly just like your slave master. You are following the white man's religion as much as you say you are against him and his teachings. The Arabians gave us the truth. Now, Kali Muhammad seen this and our brother Malcolm X seen this. He was our road map to salvation. God gave us a black man who was strikingly upright. Who was not a part of that Christian church, okay? He worshipped God with no partners. Malcolm X was a guide for us to come to Islam, not the Christian church. Yes, he had a whole lot of hatred for Edom in the beginning. But that's all going into a religion. Edom represents a religion. And that religion is Christianity, which has predominantly been given to us by the white man. So I encourage you to go through your Bible again with new eyes and study the scriptures like you've never seen it before. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.